So, what irritates the skin? From a skincare point of view, are irritating skincare products. Harsh scrubs, fragrance, essential oils, alcohol, um, mint, menthol, eucalyptus. Peppermint, lavender. Oh, lavender actually causes cell death. Um, if you came here without sunscreen on, your skin, collagen is breaking down, elastin is breaking down, the immune system is breaking down, Skin cells are becoming abnormal. You are mutating skin cells. That's happening and you feel fine. Communicating. I'm literally saying that retinol absorbs in, it breaks down into a specific form of vitamin A, which is too complicated to get into. And there is actually a chair, a receptor site on the cell that says, come sit down, vitamin A. Come sit down, come talk to me. And the vitamin A sits down on the cell and says, oh my gosh, I see you're making bad cells. You gotta start making better cells. Your sun damaged cells are all sticky and uneven. And when you were young, they were round and beautiful and now they're not so good. Start making better cells. Now, it doesn't go from here to here but it does make skin more like it was when it was young. And that includes peptides. Peptides are pathway communicators. Um, it includes niacinamide. Niacinamide is incredible for affecting not only the way the cell behaves, but the way the cell behaves within the pore. It's actually rather specific. It's anti-aging, but it's also improves pores, sebaceous hyperplasia. And then the last thing is to revitalize your skin. Is, is scrubs that are harsh cause micro tears in skin. It breaks down skin. You want to help your skin exfoliate the way it did when it was young, before it got damaged, before it started making, went going from here to making sticky, uneven skin cells. Your skin is building up. It's getting thick, dead skin building up. AHAs and BHAs allow skin, it absorbs in, and allows skin to exfoliate as it did when it was young. And no matter what you've read on the internet that is just absurd, it does not thin skin. It goes after dead skin. It is too large a molecule to absorb past the surface layers of skin. Let me be very clear about this. Oh, well, I'll wait till later. Well, maybe, oh geez, there is so much to tell you. We put antioxidants in pretty much all of Paula's Choice products. You, your skin is so hungry for them, it's almost like I can't give you enough. So these products that I've made specially that are particularly loaded with antioxidants is my concentrate serums, antioxidant concentrate serums. But most all of Paula's Choice products contain pollution, but especially when you live in a highly polluted area, you, you just can't get enough, and an extra one dedicated just to those types of ingredients can be very significant. Next. So replenishing is about giving skin back what it can't make for itself anymore and we use many of those ingredients so that I fill the layers of skin with the substances it needs to stay hydrated, protect the skin from damage, to interrupt the damage, and to help skin behave like it did when you were young because we're putting those young substances back into skin. Next slide. So I just talked about repairing where I literally, there are ingredients, by the way, I forget who asked me if retinol thins skin, or is it bad? Okay. I don't know that I actually, because I tend to just talk, and I don't know that I actually, oh, I think I answered it. Did I answer it? Okay, good. So it's, uh, it repeated. So I don't know how that's out there on the internet, but retinol is an ingredient that has been researched for over 60 years. It is one of the most well-researched ingredients, first for acne, 
and then for wrinkles in the 80s. We know so much about the vitamin A molecule, and I have never seen a study that says anything negative about retinol. I have only seen how it improves skin significantly. Retinol is one of the superhero ingredients, along with ingredients like niacinamide, azelaic acid, vitamin C, peptides. We have a whole section in the, in the book you'll be getting on superhero ingredients. Next slide. So let me go back to this. So BHA is my, I, we have a very close relationship. So BHA saved my skin. Remember I said I had oily, acne skin? Salicylic acid is a fascinating ingredient. First, especially if the company hasn't formulated it with irritating ingredients, which I, we often see. So assuming that the formula is gentle, salicylic acid in one and two percent concentrations and just to maintain skin in 0.5% concentrations, exfoliates gently and without inflammation. Explain that salicylic acid and BHA okay. is the same thing. Salicylic acid and BHA is the same thing. Thank you, Desiree. I don't go any place without it. Um, salicylic, BHA is an abbreviation for salicylic acid. Salicylic acid is related to aspirin. Aspirin is acetyl salicylic acid, uh, acetyl salicylic acid. And what we know about aspirin, it's an anti-inflammatory. And salicylic acid retains many of the anti-inflammatory properties of aspirin. So it's also an anti-inflammatory. And what color is acne? Red. It reduces redness. It exfoliates, so it helps unclog pores. And because it's oil soluble, meaning it can penetrate through my oily skin, it absorbs into my clogged pores and improves the shape of the pore. One of the dynamics of acne oily skin is the pore lining gets thick. So if you go in and you exfoliate and you improve the size of the pore to normal, you help unclog pores. It also has anti-acne, antibacterial properties that kills the bacteria that can trigger acne. It's a, it is a home run. In, in America, we play baseball. That means you've made it through all four bases. I don't know what you guys do running back and forth. I haven't quite figured that out, even though my husband makes me watch cricket. So um, BHA is for normal to oily, blemish-prone skin. Next slide. AHA, normal to dry. However, even though I've debated this with my company research team, a lot of people like using both. So. Even though I didn't get it, I still don't get it. It's not in the research. Once in a while, we do something based on empirical evidence, meaning we're getting way too much feedback, way too much panel information that says people can do better using both. So one is some people like using an AHA in the daytime and a BHA at night, and we do have a product with mixed acids, not just one. I don't know, I don't do that. My whole team does that. Okay, are the beautiful ingredients you want to get to your skin deteriorate once the lid comes off, the good ingredients break down in the presence of air, right? Once a fruit comes off a tree or a head of lettuce gets pulled out of the ground, how long does it take to deteriorate in your refrigerator? Really fast, really fast. Jar packaging is a problem. We don't use it. We, I used it in my first assortment of products in 1994. Three years later, all of the research came out about deterioration of antioxidants in particular, but pepti I mean everything. And putting lemon on the skin is inflammatory. Yogurt is dairy. Dairy can be an irritant for a lot of people. Putting it on top of the skin does nothing. Doesn't absorb into a larger molecule, and we'll talk in a little bit about absorption. You can't reproduce what brilliant skin, you can't make a sunscreen in your kitchen. 
You can't repair sun damage in your kitchen. You can't protect your skin from pollution in your kitchen. It's not what's not up there. Oh, I know that. You know. <laughs> I can't believe you just did that. Did you hear? Mm. Of course they did. Sunscreen. Sunscreen. That's the first line of defense to have young skin tone to prevent its colorations. So it, it's, it's, don't, it's such a, all of these are such a waste of money. I cannot even, and not, let's say, if you see your skin move up or down, you are tearing the delicate elastin fibers in skin. Elastin is the substance in skin, the structure in skin that allows skin to bounce back. So if you keep, you know, your breasts start up here, they're heavy, they don't event eventually, the elastin that kept them up, they don't bounce back, they sag. Your rear end sags, your skin sags. You want as much as possible to support those things, to not help gravity do its job of pulling it. That's bad, that causes wrinkles, that doesn't help wrinkles. The other thing they tell you is that it helps ingredients absorb. You cannot help a gradient absorb. The ingredients absorb on their own based on their molecular size. It's actually an area of science that has a name. It's called the Dalton Rule. I'm not gonna get into it, it's way too technical. But if an ingredient is a particular molecular size, it will stay on the surface, it will absorb, absorb in a little bit, or it will absorb in a lot. Now there are delivery systems that can help with absorption, but basically ingredients absorb on their own. You cannot change the molecular size of an ingredient to get it in. And you don't need all ingredients to absorb the same way. Right? If everything absorbed in, what would be left on the surface? What would be left on the surface? My job as a formulator is to take care of all of your skin. So some ingredients have to stay on the surface to interrupt damage. Other ingredients have to absorb. Lawnmower does, right? It pricks skin. If you continually wound skin, you damage it. You're tearing at skin that makes pollution worse and your skin can't recover. Not to mention, not everything needs to absorb. Don't pull at your skin. You see it move, it's a mistake. When you take off makeup, try to do it as gently as you can. Sheet masks. So, so, I, I have been in Korea for a very long time. I love Korea, and I hate them for coming up with sheet masks. I don't know who the idiot was, but I, if I knew I would, it would not be pretty. We don't have that much time, right? You put on a sheet mask, you're supposed to keep it on. In, in, in Korea, they keep it on for like 20, 30, 40 minutes. Yeah, 15, 20 minutes. It's the Koreans. What? 15, 20 minutes. Okay. In, in the rest of the world, nobody's quite as crazy about skincare as the East Asians. They do keep it on for... 30 to 40 minutes. 15 to 20 minutes for something with no research that shows it's better for skin. They make all kinds of claims that it helps absorb ingredients. And it can't. It can't, it doesn't. So when you take it off, it might feel smooth, but it doesn't do anything that a well-formulated skincare product can't do better and faster. Time is precious. I don't want you wasting your time on what can't improve your skin.